Hello there, and welcome to another episode of The Unwatchables, where this time we actually review a show when it comes out. This is probably the only time we'll ever do this, to be honest. Today we're going to be giving our take on the Mysterious Benedict Society on Disney+. Plus. Yep, new show dropped today based off of a... Uh... A book that I did not think was popular, but I guess it was good enough for Disney to want to buy it. So it's a book about like, so there's this thing called The Emergency, right? And we'll talk about that later. But it's basically like just like unrest in the people. And there's this dude called Mr. Benedict. And he sets out an advertisement saying he wants children to come take a test. To get special like academic something or something rather. And so a bunch of kids who are our protagonists take this test. And they all pass a series of kind of weird and crazy tests. Where they end up on this team with Mr. Benedict. To go to a school basically and try to stop this machine. (laughs) That is giving like subconscious messaging to create this whole unrest. I think I did an okay job explaining that. It's a series of unfortunate events, except they have adults who actually listen to them. The best praise I could give this this show is that it is extremely book accurate. Like, half of the first episode, I mean, like, more than half of the first episode is basically just lines from the book, which I'm, you know, I'm down with that. I'd say not just the first episode. After I watched the two episodes at, like, 3 a.m. last night, because I don't sleep... Um, I decided, you know, we're probably going to make an episode on this, and I put on an audiobook throughout my entire day and listened to the entire book up to the point where the show got. Literally, the first two episodes, they were including throwaway, random, useless lines from the book, and that impresses me, because every book-to-movie remake I've seen to this point in my life has been so bad at that they only take like important lines and i'm not saying you should have the same lines but like some (coughs) percy jackson (coughs) don't even have the same story so i'm very very impressed yeah and though i will kind of talk about like some of the things that sort of disappointed me in this because it's it's not perfect i do have a few little itsy bitsy things i'm not a fan of but overall i think just adapting the like the plot and the characters, I think they did a really good job with that. Like one character I am a little bit worried about though is um Tony Hale as Mr. Benedict and uh, Let Drop the Curtain, because like I don't know in the books Mr. Benedict just seemed more like old and wise and contemplative, kind of like kind of like Dumbledore. It reminded me of Dumbledore a lot, and here he's portrayed more like cheery and goofy and funny and his insomnia isn't played up as much but it's played up enough i guess it's another way of you know i guess another way of interpreting the character and i don't have a huge problem with it i'll just have to wait and see how it turns out don't honestly think i would like this show as much as i do if i haven't if i didn't read the book because so far like i'm not blown away i'm just surprised that you know it's actually pretty good because, like, it's not like a brilliant show or anything. It's just it's, compared to the book, it's basically the same thing, and that's not something you see very often. One of my main images of the book is that it's sort of like dark and dreary. You know, they're talking about the emergency all the time. So what I imagine is this really dreary look. It's like gray outside. It's raining, and once they get inside benedict's mansion it's kind of like it's sort of colorful you know like the the this the test rooms they're they're colorful and then when they reach the school it's supposed to be i have always imagined it like an asylum you know like an insane asylum except it's a school yeah except they were the opposite of that they were bright and colorful and it was weird i could see which route they were going for they were going for the really off kilter overly positive route which i don't know i feel like that's the the really obvious way to go about it, because that's exactly what Series of Unfortunate Events does. They make everything so colorful, it hurts. But with this, I imagined it as, like, is like the kids see this as a prison, you know? And everyone who is actually okay with this place, something's really wrong with them. And 
like the thing that really hits this home is when um in the book they have the drop the curtain show up in a wheelchair in the cafeteria and give like his whole beginning of the school year announcement and then they have this big reveal oh my gosh it's it's mr benedict you know it's not but we don't know that yet yeah except they ruin that reveal in the trailer as well he is my twin brother Yeah, here they just have him reveal his presence in a classroom. And I don't know, I just feel like the book had this huge build-up, you know, like, Benda keeps telling them something is wrong, something's really bad. And it's, like, building up, then they reach this really dark school, you know, it's all gray. At, like, the, the older students are, are, like, really weird and everything. And then it's, like, slowly building up, they're adjusting, and then boom! Here comes Mr. Benedict in a wheelchair, you know? It just... <laughs> it, yeah, where's the wheelchair, The wheelchair, Disney? It's such an important part of his character. He's supposed to seem unthreatening and like nothing is threatening about someone in a wheelchair, but then you realize he's really evil. You know, I'm not necessarily saying the whole thing was too colorful, but I feel like it would have made it much more interesting if the moment they got to the school rather than the whole time, there was like a dramatic like color palette shift Yeah. to grays and blacks and browns outside of it with Benedict and all that is super colorful, you know? Yeah, because how I imagine it is like in... In series of unfortunate events, it's all colorful, like the town's all colorful, but then when they reach Count Olaf's mansion, it's like, boom, it's all dark and gray. And my only other honest complaint is Sticky's supposed to be bald. I see hair, I shouldn't see hair, because the whole thing is that he, he, you know, he had a full head of hair when his parents were, um, were taking advantage of his skills and like taking all the money and everything, and they were really pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. And then when he ran away, he shaved his head so he wouldn't be noticed. And then, like, by the second book, he starts to have, like, little little hairs start to come in and everything. But, I don't know, both that and, and the drop the curtains wheelchair, they're, they're, like, important character traits. Would you have watched it if you hadn't read the book? No, not at all. I'd see it as, I'd see it as a series of unfortunate events ripoff. I wouldn't even see that. I'd just be like, oh, I wonder if my little siblings will watch that. I just want to say that the trailer... Did this show dirty? They reveal in the trailer that the drop of the curtain is is Mr. Benedict's brother. I know they played this up a ton in the book. They were like, "There's this mysterious man on the island, the drop of the curtain," and he was like the sender for the cryptic messages, and he was like had children or whatever, and it was super creepy. And they're like, "What? Yeah. Why did he send us here?" And they all have panic attacks. Mind you, we're only two episodes into this. They've only released two episodes so far. So there's gonna be a lot too. It's not done till like August sixth. Yeah, I I'm not sure whether this show will hold up. I don't have the highest hopes that it will like hold up completely, but I think it will be a good enough adaption. It will be good enough. I feel like this show's off to a good start. I don't think it's gonna hold up completely, but you know, I'm ready to be surprised if it does. Bye. Check out the extended podcast version of this YouTube video on Spotify. There's probably a link either in the comments section or in the description. You'll be able to find like an extended version of this conversation. So check that out. It's good. Goodbye.